Hi, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go through problem 11. In problem 11, uh, we have that um, f is a function defined by f of x equals root absolute value of x minus 2 for all x. Which of the following statements is true, is on the question. And a says, f is continuous but not differentiable at x equals 2. Correct. Um, why? Well, we'll show that all the other answer choices are poor, um, and also uh, confirm that um, A has got to be the correct answer choice. Um, yeah. Um, so B is false, and um, C is false. Therefore, F is continuous, but not differentiable. Therefore, those, those alone say that A has to be an answer choice if you're like a test taker and whatnot. Um, that might indicate they're over-representing that item, um, these items all together, so why are they doing that, right? So, um, I guess, all right. But anyway, uh, why is, let's go through each, each of the wrong answer choices. So in B, why is F not differentiable at X equals two? To get one, one um, answer to that is this. So, you can view F of X as a composition of two or three functions. I'm going to elect to use three functions. So suppose we view f as a composition of g, h, and k. So f is um, g of h of k of x. Did I do enough uh, parentheses? Yep, that's right. Now, if that's the case, then by chain rule, f prime of x would have to be g prime of h of k of x times h prime of k of x. Eh. I don't like my k there, sorry. k of x. And then times k prime of x. Okay. So you see, uh, if we look at um, f and try to decompose it, it must be true that um, g of x is equal to root x. And then um, h of x is equal to absolute value of x, and then finally k of x is simply x minus 2. This is one way to view it as a composition of three functions. And here it's clear that at some point I will need to figure out what h prime is. But h prime of x is undefined um, for uh, x is equal to 0. But since I'm plugging in x minus 2, which is k of x, k of 2 will be 2 minus 2, which is 0. And since I'll be evaluating h at k of 2, which is 0, I will have that this is an undefined quantity in my chain, in, in the chain rule. Uh, and therefore, f is not differentiable. Yeah? There is no composition of... Um, f into different functions that you create, that will avoid the absolute value function being undefined when you plug in x equals 2. Um, as, as x equals 2 is carried through and it gets to the part where the absolute value is, it, it, it will be undefined uh, inevitably. So for that reason, uh, b is not true. Okay, I gave you one, one plausible explanation. Okay, and then, um, but but it is continuous, right? Like there's, because um, the limit is x goes to 2 of f of x um, would have to be uh, root, uh, well, you know, you'd have to do the limit at, as x goes to 2 of x minus 2. So in the composition, it's just going to say, you know, 2 minus 2, which is 0, which is identical to f of 2, and therefore it is continuous. Okay. Um, in other words, the cusp scenario affects differentiability, uh, that and the absolute value, but not continuity. There's a, nowhere in the composition, I'm I, I, sorry, I hesitated at one point because I was trying to figure out the best way to explain. Nowhere in the composition of the three functions do you have a discontinuity in any of the functions, and therefore, f should not be discontinuous. That's a better way to summarize. Okay, and then d, the limit is x goes to 2 of f of x is not 0. Well, since f of 2 
is equal to zero, and we assumed f to be continuous, and c it must be that the limit is x goes to two of f of x is equal to zero. Therefore, it's claiming that it's not equal to zero must be false. Um, okay, and then e is just like an outrageous answer. Like it, I mean, it doesn't belong here at all. X equals two is a vertical asymptote for f would imply that the limit um, is x goes to two from the left uh, or um, the limit is x goes to two uh, from the right of f or both is equal to um, is equal to infinity or negative infinity. Uh, if this was the case, then you're right, but this is not the case at all. The limit is x goes to 2 is 0, and not anything about infinity of any kind. Therefore, this is false. This is um, what the definition of a vertical asymptote would suggest we consider. And yeah, like when we consider that, this is false. Okay, therefore, A's got to be the correct answer. I probably over explained, but I hope it helped. Take care.